Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Jay's Fifth Down Podcast. I am your host, Jay, and I'm here today with Coach, <clears throat> with Coach Trevor Williams of Creekview High School. Glad to have him on. He's head football coach there. Thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Jay, thanks for having me, man. Always excited to get a chance to share a little bit about our program and about our kids. Yes, sir. So, uh, Coach, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, um, your coaching journey and uh, you know, and then how you end up at Creekview anyway. So we can just talk about that. Yeah, I grew up uh, right down the road from Creekview. Uh, actually attended our rival high school before Creekview opened. Uh, it actually opened, I think, two years after I graduated. Um, but I've known I've wanted to be a high school football coach for as long as I can remember. Uh, it's one of those things. My dad was a high school football coach, um, worked played under some really good ones that kind of inspired me to, to want to make an impact, but um, played college football at Tusculum College in Greenville, Tennessee, small division two school. I always tell people I participated. I, I didn't play, um, but some lifelong friendships, some really good dudes, but more importantly, you kind of learn the business side of football, kind of the, how to learn new systems, how to, how to function within locker rooms with, with guys different than yourself. Um, get done doing that, finish up at Kennesaw State with my bachelor's degree and was fortunate enough to get hired by Chris Bennett at Forsyth Central High School. Uh, spent four years there, did everything from running backs to special teams coordinator to offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach my last year there. Um, then moved on to South Forsyth, worked for Jeff Arnett uh, for six years, started as a running backs coach there, then flipped over. Uh, to the defensive side, we needed a defensive backs coach and thought that would be a good move for my career. You know, I had coordinated special teams, coordinated an offense, wanted to learn the third uh, phase of the game inside and out so that once I got an opportunity to be become a head coach, you know, you have, have that background and, and that knowledge base. And really, I tell people all the time that to me was the best thing professionally that I've done was flip sides of the ball and learn something different. Uh, I think with as much spread and as much passing game as you see now, you've got to have a really strong defensive backs coach to, to be good on that side of the ball. And was fortunate enough to work with Jason Nash as our defensive coordinator. And then when he moved on to Colquitt County, got the, got the chance to get promoted uh, and run the defense there at South for coach Arnett for a few years. And um, then got a chance to come back home. You know, uh, always, I always tell people, you know, this is where I'm from. It's people I grew up with. Uh, we've actually got kids in our program now of, of guys I played high school football with. So being back home has been a special privilege. It's a great place to raise a family. My wife and I are both from here. So it's been a really cool experience. Yeah, Coach, that's awesome. Um, so talk about you guys this season, 2023. You went 7-4. and four. Uh, Just kind of sum it up and, you know, you know, maybe the highs and lows and players that stood out to you and your staff. Yeah, we, uh, you know, seven and four coming off a, a disappointing year in, in 2022. So getting back to the playoffs was a was a big goal. Um, had a really strong senior class. I think we had 10 guys that had started since they were or at least played since they were sophomores at the varsity level. Uh, 10 guys, 10 seniors that had played as sophomores in our playoff game in 2021 against Carrollton. So brought back a lot of experience, uh, uh, some really good players. Um, Andrew Rosinski, four-star offensive tackle that signed with North Carolina. Pearson Sears was our center who ended up signing with Mercer. Um, Michael Roach set the single game rece receptions record in the playoff game against Blessed Trinity was our tight end. All those guys had been three-year starters. Reed Anderson was, uh, was an all-state nominee at, at middle linebacker for us was a four-year letterman three-year starter at the mic so you had guys that you were really comfortable with uh that that had played a ton of football that knew what to expect uh got off to a to a really nice start with a couple wins early uh kind of felt like we let one slip away against calhoun their week three um turned the ball over i think it was five times and, and you're not going to win against a good team doing that Nope. Uh, then got got the ship righted just a little bit and um, dropped a tough game to uh, to Sequoia uh, late in the season that that could have given us a home playoff game and and that was tough. Rebounded the next week against Woodstock. Uh, then you know obviously everybody knows how good Rome was a year ago. Just just absolutely phenomenal. I think they had the best defensive line in the state of Georgia. 
uh, week 10. And, and then we roll into blessed Trinity and, uh, you know, coach Dudley and his staff do a tremendous job. Felt like, uh, we left some change on the table that night, but credit to them. They had a great plan for us and executed it well. And, um, but th- those guys, those seniors are really, really special to me for a magnitude, a multitude of reasons. But number one was just how close they were as a group, how tight they were and, and how much football they played for us. Yeah. Yeah. And experience is an important thing um, in football. You know, you know, that as a coach and uh, when you get a lot of your players coming back, that's huge for your team and, um, you know, and your locker room too, right? Leadership, you know, so that's, that's important. So, um, just talk about that a little bit, uh, how important leadership is on your team in your program and how you guys like emphasize that. Uh, you know, I think that is the number one thing. And the buzzword right now is culture, right? Everybody's talking about how to build the culture in their locker room and on their team. But, but that comes down to leadership, right? Because to me, the culture piece is the behaviors and the standards of your organization. But the leadership piece is how it's implemented when the coaches aren't around. Uh, When coach walks out of the locker room, do the leaders hold everybody accountable to that standard? Uh, And and that's huge for us. And and our guys do a good job. We we have a leadership uh, academy in the offseason where we kind of try to teach them about servant leadership, teach them about our standards, our core values. And and then we lean on those guys. We let them lead. We we I tell them all the time, it's your team. Um, You only get one shot you know, as a senior to, to leave that legacy and it's yours and, and take it and run with it. Uh, but I, I think that's the one intangible when you look back at football seasons of, you know, did we reach our potential? Cause to me, that's, that's coaching, right? Did you get your team to that ceiling? Cause not everybody's got the same ceiling, certain teams, their ceilings, the state title, certain teams, you know, it's, it's making the playoffs. Some teams it's winning two games. That's the, the best they can do that year. Uh, and as coaches, it's our job to to reach that ceiling. And I think the number one thing that factors into that is leadership. Yeah, that's right. Because if there's no leadership, then then <laughs> um, your team there is no like there's no sense of identity in, within your team mm-hmm. within your program. So it's a very important thing. So um, yeah, coach. So moving on, talk a bit about your offensive and defensive philosophies. Like, how do you run your your team as far as those who are regarded and you know, when teams line up against Creekview on Friday nights, like where are they going to get offensively, defensively? Well, offensively, we want to be multiple. We're, we're in the shotgun like everybody else, but uh, it starts with being able to run the football. We, we were fortunate. Again, we had a great offensive line a year ago, anchored by two Division One offensive linemen. Um, but it's – Everything that kind of gave me a headache as a defensive coordinator, we tried to ball up and, and make that the philosophy, right? Formations, motion, shifts, option game, whether that's running gun triple stuff like you see Coastal Carolina, like Coach Fritz was doing at Georgia Southern back in 2014, uh, or your RPO and, and, and putting the, the edge defender in conflict. I believe you can't necessarily line up in stagnant formations and run base plays and get the results that you need. I feel like there's got to be eye candy, things to make them a a step slower and things to to create one-on-one matchups that your guys have a chance to win. And then defensively, you know, there's a, there's a ton of ways to, to skin a cat. I grew up in football with the bend, but don't break line up in base, you know, don't get beat over the top you know, keep everything in front of you, those types of things. And people have won a ton of games that way. That's a solid defensive plan. And when I got to South Forsyth and worked for Jeff Farnett, it was, we're going to move, we're going to bring pressure, we're going to slant and angle and bring blitzes and play cover zero, and we're going to try to make high school kids make mistakes. And I latched onto that. That kind of fit my personality as more of an aggressive guy. And and that's kind of what we brought here to Creekview is – with, with Coach Chip Martin, my defensive coordinator, he's been with us. He was with us five years at South and been with me all five years here at Creekview. We see eye to eye on, you know, pressure bust pipes. We're going to bring pressure, try to get in your face, try to create negative plays, try to create turnovers, um, because I feel like it fits our kids, it fits our style. And in, in today's football, offenses are so good 
and the tempo is so good and the players are so good. If you sit back in a stagnant look, they'll pick you apart. You know, I think at, at the 6A level in Georgia, when you go look at the quarterback play and the wide receiver play, it's it's grown exponentially in the last 15 years. You know, even – the worst team on your schedule has got a quarterback that can that can sling it. They've got a couple wide receivers that can go to the house. They've got a running back that can go. And their scheme, everybody here is so well coached, you're not just going to sit in one thing and win a game. So I feel like, like that aggressive piece gives us a chance to be successful. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, like you said, now the way offenses are spread out, you can't just <laughs> – the whole, you know, the – Okay, we'll bend but not break. I mean, we'll just kind of keep everything in front of us, tackle well, and, you know, um, that kind of stuff that's like, okay. But then when, when they're just dicing you up, up and down the field, and before you know it, you're in the back, you're in your own end zone, you defend your own end zone. It's like, okay, now what do we do, right? <laughs> um, so, um, but yeah, absolutely, coach. So, uh, talk to me about what's, um, what's something that you, would tell yourself like that, you know, now as a head coach that, you know, you would have told yourself when you first started coaching that, you know, you wish you had knew then that, you know, now. It's not about you, (laughs) Um, (laughs) you know, you, you get into this. And and again, I told you, I, I wanted to be a coach from the time I could remember, but it was very much, you know, call plays, win games, win state championships, do all those it was very me focused, right? Where you get into it and you realize the impact you can have on these kids and, and the difference you can make in their lives. It's not about you. You're a servant. You're here as a servant to those young men to give them what they need to be better husbands, fathers, employees, and members of society. That would be the first thing. And then the second thing, is enjoy where your feet are. Enjoy the moments, whether your team is struggling and, and we all struggle in those those years or you win a region championship or whatever, or you're the running backs coach or you're the DBs coach or you're getting a chance to coordinate and call plays. Enjoy where you are and what you're doing uh, because those are some of the most fun I've ever had was coaching a JV football game on Thursday, calling the offense for the first time when I was 22 years old. That to me was, was as much fun as I've had. So just enjoy those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the moments. Uh, Don't rush the process. Right. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I'm a firm believer in that too. Like, you know, God's going to put you where he wants you to be and on the, on on the path that he wants you to be on, you know, and it's going to, he's just going to take you, along the steps to get there. Um, and obviously, he had a path for you to be a head coach, and he took you in different increments and different parts to get to where you are right now. So, um, Well, and it's one of those things, you know, we all set goals for ourselves. So I wanted to be a head coach by the time I was 30. Well, it ended up being 33, so I'm going, well, I'm late, right? I'm not late. I'm on, I'm on God's schedule. Yeah. He closed the doors, and thankfully he did, because there were jobs I put in for when I was young that, thank the good Lord, I didn't get. Uh, because it wasn't a fit for me. It wasn't a fit for my family. It would have been a fit for that place. Um, but he closed the doors that were supposed to be closed and then opened the right ones, whether that's, you know, getting a job at Forsyth Central and the ability to learn and grow and, and do that, whether it's, you know, getting the South. There was another job that I was ready to take, and there were some hiccups and some things that happened and that door kind of got closed and, and the door at South opened and man, what a coaching staff that was of good men. Coach Arnett and, and those guys at South made me want to be a better person, a better coach, a better man, a better husband, a better father. And then when the door opened at Creekview, it was just the right time and the right fit. And and you're absolutely right that sometimes, you know, we get a schedule in our head and a plan in our head. And the best thing we can do is just lean in and, and trust God and trust that he's going to put us where he wants us. Yeah, that's right. That's right, Coach. Um, so um, talk to you about, uh, Coach, what I always ask this uh, every coach I interview, but uh, what's the funniest thing that just ever happened to you by, like while you've been coaching like you know what, that you can remember where it's been practice or a game or something the player did or 
or a coach did. Maybe you did. What's what's something? Man, uh, that's a good one. The funniest thing. Well, uh, we were at South, I would say, would, would be probably the funniest thing. And um, we beat our rivals for the first time in a couple years. And our defensive coordinator, Jason Nash, he goes – Double knee slide across the turf. <laughs> We're in black slacks. He's got turf burns on his pants. Oh. We got another coach that's, you know, six gunning across the field. And, and just the the joy that, that that moment brought. But we still we still joke about that. That was a pretty good one. Yeah, sounds like fun. <laughs> sounds like a fun time uh, for sure. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, coach. Yeah, I mean that sounds like a, a great experience. Especially, it's always fun when you beat your rivals, right? I mean, it's it's that feeling. In high school football is just different when you beat your rivals. It's like it's, you know, especially if you hadn't had too much success against them. But yep. <laughs> uh, even when you do, it's just always it's always a good time, you know. So, um, but that's one of the that's one of the blessings about coaching kids is they're always doing funny stuff, and they don't even mean to. Yeah. Um, some of the stories that that you could tell on kids over 15 years, nobody would believe them except for the coaches that were on your staff. I mean, you could tell them to people and they're going, coach, there, there ain't no way that happened. Um, but it keeps you young. It keeps you on your toes. And and you always got to remember that, that they're kids and they make mistakes. But, man, it's a joy to be around them every day. It's what gets me out of bed. Hey, amen to that. Uh, well, coach, um, Last little thing here, uh, just talk a little about what's a challenge that you think that you uh, that high school football coaches face right now, uh, just in today's world, 2024, with, you know, with social media and, you know, now NIL stuff, recruiting. Like, what's a, some challenge you think, you know, that you guys face? You know, it, it's ever evolving, ever changing. Uh, recruiting changes almost by the day. Um but I enjoy that part of it. There's nothing more fulfilling to me than seeing a kid's dream come true and that right fit being made. Right. And I tell people all the time, don't chase an offer, chase the fit, chase the school that you want to be at for four years, chase where you want to go. NIL has certainly um, brought its challenges at the college level and it's trickling down to, to the high school level. But I would say the toughest thing in 2024 is knowing the level of accountability that these young men need, but it may be the only place they get it. Um, yeah. The world tells them it's not their fault. The world tells them that their feelings in the moment should dictate their actions instead of the correct actions. And, and being held accountable doesn't feel good in the moment that growth process that fire they've got to go through is difficult and i think the biggest challenge we have right now as coaches is finding that balance with those kids of loving up on them so that they allow you to hold them to that standard when when other people tell them that that it's okay there's still a standard that has to happen because at the end of the day, the goal is better husbands, fathers, employees. And in the real world, there's a standard they have to meet, whether they like it or not. And football is a great teacher of that. And that, I think, is the biggest difference is it's, it's becoming less and less comfortable to hold people to that standard. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree. Uh, I definitely agree now. Uh, so, you know, because I, I graduated in twenty one, so I, I played. I've been I played high school football from yeah seventeen to twenty one. Um, so you know, and yeah, it's 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 definitely hard for sure. You know, keeping your players like you gotta you gotta keep them accountable. You know, and and hold them to that standard of excellence and you know and uh, effort and, and toughness and leadership and you know so it's just because now like you say the world wants them to think oh it's not your fault it's but you need to be told that um you know can't be coddled right um so um yeah coach good stuff we appreciate you coming on the show today you know it was great talking with you learning some new things and always good um you know talking ball so we appreciate you coming on coach 
Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Anytime. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. And you have a great day, coach. We appreciate it. You too.